Hello, I'm JW, and in this video it's fuses once again, but this time we're actually going to look at some real fuses and uh, put various currents through them. And first of all, we'll look at the situation where you've got a small overload, so for example a 5 amp fuse with, say, 5, 6 or 7 amps or whatever going through there. And uh, we'll also look at another situation uh, equivalent to a short circuit, where you've got, say, a 5 amp fuse and many 10s or even 100 amps or more goes through there, and see what happens in that situation. Now obviously we're going to do this outside because uh, there's the possibility of uh, melting wires and uh, molten metal going everywhere, so we'll uh, go outside and uh, see what we can get set up. Now this is 5 amp fuse wire, so uh, let's just turn on. And we've got the starting current there of about 1.3 amps, so just increase that. So that's the full 5 amps there. As you see, the diffuse wire is doing absolutely nothing. At 6.3, again, nothing actually happens. At around 8 amps, again, it's still holding that. Notice the current is slightly falling because the wire is actually heating up. And that's broken. Now this is actually 15 amp fuse wire, so three times the rating of the previous 5 amp variety. So we'll do the same again, just gradually increase the current to see what happens. So just coming up to the 15 amps point there. And as expected, of course, it's not doing anything because obviously it's designed to carry that current indefinitely. So that's 20. And as you see, it's holding that for uh, pretty much an indefinite length of time. And if we increase above that, it should obviously fail at some point. That's 25, and see the wire is actually glowing red there, so obviously near the point of failure. You can notice it's not failing straight away, it's still holding at that uh, 25 amps or so. And there it's just broken. Now here I've just replaced that 15 amp fuse wire with another piece of 15 amp fuse wire. And I've left the uh, settings to the same current that it failed at previously. So we'll turn it on at that uh, current and see how long it takes to fail. Okay, so if you saw there, the current was uh, just under 30 amps, or double the rating of the device, and it took several seconds to actually melt through and fail. Now, as you saw there, the 15 amp fuse wire actually took several seconds to fail, and that's entirely consistent with uh, what you would expect, and of course what's defined in those uh, tables and graphs which were shown in the previous video. Now, uh, another interesting situation is whereby if you had no 15 amp fuse wire left, you might be tempted to use uh, three lots of 5 amp fuse wire, for example. After all, 3 times 5 is, of course, 15. But uh, the thing is, does that actually react in the same way as a single piece of wire? Because 
Obviously a single wire is not actually physically identical to three smaller strands twisted together. So uh, let's test that out again. So we use the same current settings as we had uh, previously, and instead of the single piece of wire we use three pieces of 5 amp wire, but uh, twisted together to form a single piece. So uh, we'll see how long that takes to break. So we saw there the uh, three pieces of 5 amp wire twisted together actually failed far more quickly than the single piece of 15 amp wire. So fairly obvious that uh, the two are not equivalent. And uh, although in that case it was obviously quicker to fail for the three bits twisted together, using uh, other variations of various bits of wire shoved in is certainly not a recommended thing to do. So in that case it obviously failed more quickly, but of course there's no way to know what uh, various other combinations might do. And in some instances it may all fail uh, more slowly which of course could lead to a dangerous overheating or fire type situation. Now those were all fairly moderate sort of overload situations and in the case of the 15 amp wire it was around a 30 amp current going through a 15 amp piece of wire, so roughly in the sort of double the rating of the wire. And as expected of course it melted through, but certainly not instantaneously it took many seconds to do so. And uh, to complete this particular segment, uh, this is a piece of 5 amp fuse wire, and we're going to put that same 30 odd amps through there. So uh, let's see how quickly that fails. Yeah, and as expected, it broke through pretty much straight away. Now those uh, tests there were in moderate overload type situations, so in, for example a 15 amp fuse with 30 amps through it. And though the last one was about 30 amps on a 5 amp fuse, the wire still actually melted. It didn't particularly sort of explode or vaporise away. And of course exploding and vaporising is what happens when you have a much higher current, such as in a short circuit situation. Now of course we're not going to be shorting out the mains or doing anything stupid like that, but uh, what we do have is the means to put say 100 amps through these uh, fuses. And for those we use the uh, fairly typical Wilex rewirable fuse with the wire inside and subject those various ratings to various different currents. Now this particular set has been recorded from behind a protective screen, obviously to prevent uh, molten metal uh, flying into the camera and of course injuring people in the vicinity. So there are a few reflections there, but uh, of course that is necessary to ensure safety. Now on this setup uh, I've changed the uh, equipment, so we've got a 15 amp fuse there with the uh, 15 amp fuse wire inside and uh, connected to a supply. And this is what happens when you put a higher current through. This is a fault current of approximately 100 amps on a 15 amp fuse. So as you saw there, that's more of an explosion and the uh, fuse wire is actually vaporised away and uh, forcibly flies out of the fuse holder. Same arrangement, 100 amp volt current, uh, but this is a 5 amp rewirable fuse. Now the same arrangement again, but this is a 30 amp fuse, and I've increased the current to 140, which should be in a one second or less disconnection time. And 140 just happens to be the maximum current available from this device anyway. Well, that didn't seem uh, too far off one second, so uh, the uh, regulations, surprisingly, are actually correct. And just for completeness, I've uh, managed to locate a 20 amp fuse there, one of the less common varieties. And again, this is the 140 amp volt current.
Now in that final example there with the 20 amp fuse it was just, uh, fairly clear that uh, several pieces of molten metal actually flew out of the fuse holder, one of which landed on the white paper background and caused a burn mark there. And of course uh, that's why you don't want to be putting a fuse into a fuse box with the power turned on, because if a fault was still there that is exactly what's going to happen, and if your hand is there, of course, holding the fuse, then you're going to get a severe burn injury, not to mention the risk of electric shock and so on. So uh, hence that's why you always switch off the power before inserting the fuse, and of course replace the cover, and then switch on the power. And if the cover's missing, as in the case of quite a lot of these types of fuse box, then you want to be switching on the power with your hand well away from the fuses, otherwise uh, it's quite likely you will get uh, molten copper sprayed onto your fingers. Not something you're actually going to want. And another point there about that last one, in the, the fuse itself, uh, you could see did actually move noticeably when the current was applied, and that's purely due to the magnetic field created in the two wires as the sort of 100 plus amps actually flowed through there. And it's not because the wires were loose, it's, it's just due to the magnetic field. Uh, that's all for this time, so until next time, thanks for watching.